Hello all to my lovely subscribers. How are you guys? I hope you are doing okay. Uh, and welcome to another Focus Mark 1 advice and information video. Now, the truth is, there's a lot of things that I have covered about this car, but there's one area that I haven't so far, and that is the seats. So I'm going to show you what you need to know about upgrading to leather seats, the wiring that you may or may not have, and anything that could potentially go wrong with your seats. Right, first of all, um, seats in a Focus Mark 1, mostly you will get cloth seats, unless you have a special limited edition. Many of them came with leather seats, um, and you ordered leather and maybe as an optional extra, or your car is an ST170, which will have half leather seats and the option of full Recaro leather. Now, most focuses will come with cloth seats, but over the years, many people have modified their focuses to the point where, in fact, I'd say it's the opposite now. I see more Mark I focuses with leather seats than cloth seats. And there is a really good reason for that. The cloth seats are not brilliant to look at, I've gotta be honest with you. Unless they're the gear seats, which are a little bit more comfortable, the material is much nicer, like that Valori pile type material. You will not really um, see much of a difference in comfort between the seats. I personally think that Mark I seats um, are a little bit on the uncomfortable side. I don't particularly feel that they are the most comfortable, um, particularly on the lower spec models when you do not have these bolsters. The ZTEC models gained these big thick bolsters. They're not the thickest bolsters in the world, but they were classed as sports, sportier seats. The CL and LX and gear models having a much flatter base with much flatter bolsters. There's hardly any bolster on them to be fair. But the gear seats are certainly more comfortable in terms of the material. But the patterns, blah, they just look drab. Even after a good clean, they just look really drab. And that is why people upgrade to the leather seats. And I can honestly see why people go for the leather seats. They just look really, really nice. Um, obviously, when I say leather seats, I mean leather facings. So the only actual part of the lever is the bit your back's on and the bit you actually sit on. The back side of it, the sides, most of the headrest apart from this face at the front here, it's all vinyl as you can typically expect in any car um, at this price point. Even leather seats are not full leather seats. The only cars you get full leather seats are really luxury cars and they are expensive. Now, the first thing to be wary of, yet I find the material is actually really, really durable. I mean, you can, if you pick and choose on eBay, if you're looking for a set of leather seats, um, usually they will come with some wear. It's typical to see these sort of marks down the sides and obviously where your big fat ass has been sitting or in my bony ass. Um, but uh, most usually you may get rips along the seam. This is usually the place it goes. I've had to actually stitch and repair mine. Uh, it's been stitched right here. I had to take the covers fully back for that. It's not a ridiculously hard job once you've got the seat off the car and you've started, right, you can remove this seat base with four bolts. One, two, There's four bolts that hold it down and literally comes up once you've unplugged the connectors. Um, but really, there isn't really much of an issue with that. But if you have the three doors, you have this mechanism, obviously. You've got the cable mechanism that goes all the way down here. This is where it sort of connects to the actual rod. If, you, if I pull this, that's what's going on. Now, what I would recommend is that you just put some GT85 into that mechanism. If you put GT85 in there, it will just smooth out. Don't put WD40 down there. I really don't recommend it, but it would just make sure the cable is nice and free, that there's no built of dirt or dust, because that cable, and I've seen the seat bases because I've stripped these seats down when I re-dyed these seats last year, um, the cable will literally go through the spine down here. Now, people often say, if the cable snaps, you need a new seat. What a load of rubbish. You just need to strip the seat back a little bit. You need to get the cover, this cover whipped up, which is difficult, 
and it can be hard to do it without creasing the lever ridiculously but if you do it carefully and gently as you've got the headrest out for a start um you can actually get to the base spine where you can actually get the cable and i'm pretty sure you can get second hand ones i think you can get brand new ones this piece there's the, the where the cable links onto the handle here okay you've got this this uh socket where it just sits in the actual handle right that cable stops around here and then there's a little section here but i would just make sure that all this just spray gt85 up to here okay go right inside and you will never have any issues i can assure you even the most heavy-handed of people would not break this and by the way if you have a mark ii focus and a mark V fiesta you will have a different handle on the three door models um, they are really bad for braking. These handles are prone to braking, but not the ones on Mark 1s. These are really good. Are, there are no aftermarket manufacturers of these for one good reason. They don't brake. I've never heard of one of these being broken. But on Mark 2 Focuses, these are snapping all over the place. The plastic definitely changed. But just make sure that the mechanism is nice and free and you will not have any issues whatsoever. I would recommend as well, um, if you are refurbishing your seats, if you're re your seats, I say I, I did mine in the correct colour. I had a die uh, matched, which I airbrushed straight on. It was a frustratingly long process, took me a few weeks. Most of it was cleaning and the prep work because there's a lot of dirt that gets in these perforated holes. I eliminated some of the cracks um, and it, it has definitely made the seats come up really nicely. But... One thing to note, the seat bases. Now, when you're refurbishing the seats, you just take the seat bases out with the four bolts, like I said, okay? You will have then access to the frame itself. Now, the frame is very common for rotting. Um, there are parts of mine which I was really concerned about. I don't know whether mine have been near the sea, but I have actually seen this on a number of Mark 1s where they actually get really rusty. Obviously, they're not going to rot to the point where they actually need replacement, but they look really scabby and really nasty. And when you're refurbishing a seat, I would recommend going around with some rust killer uh, and some fresh satin black is what I used. And it looks really appropriate. And it's still got some overspray of zinc primer, which I did put down in some areas. But it's nice to make it look good. And obviously GT85 along the runners. The runners can get really gummed up. And that's why sometimes when you press that lead, when you pull up the lever to pull, push your seat back, it's stiff. Because there's abs it's absolutely gummed up with crap. So definitely cleaning them out, even in doing it in situ in the car, is not a bad thing to do. So clean all the runners out. Put GT85 in there. Get it nice and smooth. Okay, and then you have no issues whatsoever. Other thing is, um, obviously, these are known to get a bit weak. Um, I, you can't get brand new ones as far as I'm aware. So you have to go second hand. But they can get a bit weak to the point where, actually, I've seen the spring actually go where the seat belt won't release so just check if you're buying a mark one that these do actually work and they release with the seat belts because especially the driver's one um you can't obviously they're not interchangeable these because they can't be swapped from side to side they go one side or the other because underneath here if you can see this bar that is the pre-tensioner i call it the pre-tensioner explosion because essentially there's a big bag there's an airbag inside this tube and basically if you were in a crash that airbag would go off that would go off and obviously these have got side impact airbags on the side so you've got one here so that would go off uh and also these would explode and it pulls the belt even closer to the seat so it basically tightens you into the seat so in a crash you're not going anywhere it will pull in um, that is basically what that is for. You have an electrical connection that runs under the seat to the block over there, which I'm going to talk about in a second. These wheels can get a bit funny. Again, I would just recommend lubricating the shaft that goes all the way through the back of the seat. They can get a bit funny. Um, even those wheels, and they're not meant to come off, but I've put mine on with Gorilla Glue because one of them, again, it's not sitting very nicely, but they never sit nicely. These trims are crap, by the way. They really do break. There's a tab here 
that you really need to watch that tab can snap so there is a way of getting this off if you're refurbishing the seats but i'll tell you now getting these in the correct color is nigh on impossible um because unfortunately what did i do i ended up snapping my seats um there is i snapped the clip there it was the driver's one i snapped when i did the seats but also down here you see this little there's a little grommet there right now that is basically a clip on the other side if that if that clip snaps this trim will just be wobbling around it will not secure it this fastens it to the back but this bit will be all loose and every time you move this seat backwards and forwards that's going to move so make sure that you do not snap that clip the best way of getting that out is put is pushing it from this side so you're getting your finger in and pushing this way it's a faff but once you've got the actual seat slab out the way you'll be able to see the clip and push it from that way do not break that clip because that clip is actually part of this trim it cannot be removed and you will find yourself in difficulties getting another one you just have to go second hand and just hope for the best and hope that that hasn't been snapped or obviously if you go to a scrapyard make sure you don't repeat the same mistake and snap that one as well now when it comes to the rear seats the rear seats are exactly identical from the three door to the five door there are no differences okay on the cl models you do not get a center headrest that is the only difference whether it's cloth or leather if you have a gear model you have an armrest here they don't barely go wrong sometimes they go a bit loose where they actually attach but it's only a couple of bolts uh, and you can get these backrests disassembled quite nicely you obviously have these pull switches sometimes mine needs a bit of a clunk to actually get it back in and it has actually snapped up if it isn't sticking up like that it hasn't latched properly and um, they can be a bit of a faff to adjust and get right if you've taken these seats out i mean this one is fractionally lower than that one but and they, they're actually pointing away from each other but that's just the way they are and obviously the annoying thing about a mark one is the seat belt always gets lost on modern cars now you've got like a tie strap to stop the belt from doing that so every time you pull the seat forward this belt doesn't disappear down the side now headrest now i had this particular issue where this driver's headrest for <laughs> quite a few years and I, I don't it's always been like that since i actually bought the car i think but the headrest would slowly sink to the point where it would just sit on the actual ledge of the seat and i was thinking why is it dropping i just kept pushing it up and then it clicked in and I was thinking, why is it dropping? And in fact, one day I just got my hand, pushed it down. I could push it down by hand. And it's because these clips can sometimes fail. I had to replace one of these um, seat headrest clips. Now they go all the way in. And the way you get them out, obviously you've got to take the headrest out for a start. You've got to get a flat blade screwdriver on this side and that side, and it will come up. It's a faff. You might have to get like a pry bar tool and pry it up. But they do come out but the reason it failed is the actual clip inside had snapped um there is like a metal clip and it had just snapped from this um this little um plastic um piece here that you have to push in so you have to push that in and then you obviously have to push this in here um in fact i'm sorry it wasn't that one it was this one so there's a metal clip connected to this plastic piece and that allows you either to click in and hold or to move the headrest but the idea was the obviously the, the the metal clip had snapped and that's why the headrest was allowed to move this one doesn't do anything this doesn't hold the headrest it's this one that holds the headrest this one is merely you just push it in to get it sliding um but it actually won't stop the headrest from dropping this is the one that actually clicks into these notches here so just something to be aware of. if you've got a headrest that keeps dropping one of these clips has gone most likely not the inner one it's the outer one it's the same on this headrest oh no 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 i've got it wrong it's always the right hand one i thought it was the outside so it's the right hand side one that does it this one okay with this big tab here this one doesn't really do much now as i say as i said to you before just to make sure that the runners are nice oh look at that i don't even have to sit in the seat and it moves that's how much lubrication i've given it and obviously i gave it a bit of a paint up these trims are a bit fiddly to fit over but they're okay this trim here um 
no, not this piece. This piece, well, and this piece, are unique to the three doors. If you've got a five door, this will just be one solid piece because this part has to move, obviously, for the three door versions. So this piece is unique. Again, if you break this, you're gonna have to go looking for a three door. These are unique pieces. This can snap up the front. This, there's a clip here that you have to go like this and pry out. Be very careful. I'd take this off first, but this, just pry it gently and make sure the back end is pried out as well because there's a clip that goes round the side. So make sure, oh, it started raining again, honestly. So just make sure that this is nice and true and it sits nice and flush. Just take care. And obviously on the driver's seat, if you have a manually adjusted seat, you will have this adjuster, which I believe is a bit stiff because I haven't used it in ages, but I've just lubricated the mechanism and it makes it easy. That seat is in the lowest position possible. If you've got leather seats, you'll have this little flap, which I find quite nice. Otherwise, on the cloth seats, you have this gap like that, which is horrible. Um, but that is the lowest position possible. And believe you me, that is a high driving position. The complaint I have about Mark 1 focuses is the driving position for me is a little too high. It was deliberate. I think they were tapping into the, the MPV market, which was just taken off in the mid nineties. And I think Ford knew that a good seller would be a higher driving position than normal. Um, a lot of cars by this stage, you're sitting on the floor. I mean, you get into a, a Mark Three or Four Fiesta and you, you're sitting literally on the floor. It's quite a nice driving position. And this steering column is in the lowest position possible, but it can go really high. And it just looks really silly. It looks like an old person spec driving. But the main age old question is, can I swap my cloth seats for leather seats? Of course you can but there are some limitations you need to be aware about when doing this. There are a few types of leather seats in a Mark 1 Focus. Well, for a start, you've got to obviously think, is it a three door, five door? So obviously you don't want to buy the ones without these if you've got a three door, you know what I mean? You could fit these to a five door, you just have the ability to do that, which is pointless in a five door because you've got the door there, but you can fit three door seats to five door focuses, but you can't do it vice versa, obviously. Now, in terms of the wiring, this is where it gets really complicated. So bear with me, I'm gonna try and make it as simple as possible. Wiring looms on Mark 1 focuses, pre-facelift and facelift do vary a lot, but this is the basis of what I've seen on this car and on a lot of other cars and from what I've seen on the forums. In general, each seat will come with its connector attached to the actual frame at the bottom of the seat. So you've got a block connector under this seat, which I'm going to show you in a second, and it comes in two halves. You've got the wiring loom side, and then you've got the seat side. So the seat will have its own little block, and then the, you've got the wiring loom bit, and you connect them using a bolt that goes through the two. And therefore, you've got that connection between the two sides of the components. Whatever seat you've got, whether it's cloth or leather, you will have a number of plugs attached that the seat comes with. The one that it always comes with is a seat belt pretensioner. So there's a wire that goes to that pretensioner to the back of the block, and that is operated by the SRS system, obviously. So you will definitely have that plug, whatever seat you have. Then it's a question of options. So the second one is if you have leather seats, you will have side impact airbags. That's also another wire. So that's your second plug. The third one, if you have face, if, if you have a facelifted 1.5 Ford Focus, you will have heated seats for sure, for definite. Okay, that's another plug there and another plug, that's two plugs, one for the backrest and one for the bum warmer. Two plugs, so that's four plugs all together. So one for that, one for that, one for that, and one for that, that's four. Now, if you have a pre-facelift car with, with uh, leather seats, you may have heated seats. I believe that the silver edition has heated uh, leather seats, being a pre-facelift model. The only one, there was the Millennium, 
I believe that may have had heated seats. I'm not too sure. But the majority of seats, leather seats, for pre-facelift full focus mark ones do not have heated elements inside them. It's only when the facelift came out that leather seats pretty much had heated elements in the front seats as standard. I'm not too certain about the ST170 half leather seats. I don't believe that they were heated. Uh, it was only the optional Recaro seats, which is a common fit, and I'll just talk about that in a bit, um, that have heated elements inside them. But if you don't have heated seats, you won't have anything. You'll have a blank console, or you may have this button, this traction control button, maybe there as a one-button switch. There were several different types of these trim, these trim panels that came with the car. You could have a switch with just two buttons. You could have a switch with just one there, all the three. There's a multiple number of combinations, but this is the most common one, and this is what you got if you've got a car with leather heated seats but no traction control. That's quite rare, actually. And then the fifth plug that you may have at the bottom of that seat is if you have a gear or ST170, you will have electric height adjustment where there'll be a switch here and there'll be a motor that controls the actual height of the seat instead of a manual winder, which you get on every other seat. OK, that will be your fifth um, plug. So on my seat, I've got one two three four but i haven't got five plugs because my these seats are not electrically adjusted this seat isn't electrically adjusted for the driver's seat okay it's a manually adjusted one now these seats you could get on the ztec as an option because you've got the bigger bolsters and you could get them on the special limited editions where leather seats were standard so the chick the ellie there's quite a few ones from around 2002 2003 the issue that you need to be aware of is that the pre-facelift cars come with a five block connector on the wind loom and the pre-facelift seats likewise a five block connector. The facelift seats have eight blocks or it should be seven actually to be fair that's a correction it should be seven but the idea is that you cannot fit a pre-facelift seat to a facelifted car and vice versa without some butchery of the wiring itself. It just can't be done. And if you try to, and you're messing with the wiring, I really wouldn't be messing with wiring because we've got that, we've got, we've got at least that, then you've got heated elements. You know, we're, we're talking about decent amounts of current going around here, and you really shouldn't be fiddling with this unless there's a problem or that there's a connection issue. And that's what I experienced a long time ago, and I'll go through that in a second. Now that's the wiring that comes with the seats potentially. What comes with the wiring loom can vary from specs and model years completely. I will tell you, if you do not have, a, if you have a gear or ST170, you'll have all the wiring under the earth. You'll have all of it. You'll have all the wiring for all these things, the side airbag, the heated seats, and the electrical adjustment motor because all these came with that particular specification of car but if you have any other spec you may not have the wiring in the loom for that if you have a cl lx or ztec that has come out with cloth seats from the factory it would have been fitted with a wiring loom that would not include that okay and it would certainly not include electric adjustment for the seat. So if you bought some leather seats, let's say out of a gear and popped them into a ZTEC, you'd find that you just you wouldn't be able to adjust the driver's height because there is no wiring for the electric adjustment motor. You have to have manual seats in a ZTEC or if it's a CL or LX the same. Now, as far as I'm aware, CL, LX and ZTEC, they will all have the wiring for that, obviously, and for heated seats. And a lot of people don't realise that there is actually wiring for heated seats. Now, I am talking about the facelift models. The pre-facelift models with the small four block connector wiring, I'm not so sure your car will come 
with the wiring for heated seats. As I said, it's very rare to get heated leather seats on a pre-facelift. Most usually, they didn't have any heated seats at all. I was really lucky because the bolsters, the bolster that came with this car when I bought it, wasn't in really, it was in really poor condition, and it was actually collapsing down here where people get in and out. This seat slab is actually off a pre-facelift heated leather seat set. That's very, very rare, and it works. It works. It's the original. It's actually got the original. Um, element inside it i've had to replace all the elements in the other four seats uh, it's a question of taking the side covers off putting a, a new heating element and cutting the plugs um because obviously if you've got universal heated elements which you can get on ebay they come with their own plugs cut them off and solder it to the old plugs from the old heating elements and then you're done usually the heating elements i will tell you this they break where they go through the foam they just break. They do a turn. There's a lot of hole in the foam. I think it's down here. And you can actually see some of the wiring here. Can you see that? Now, that's the actual original wiring, I believe. And it actually goes through a hole just here. And they break where the hole is. So if you have heated, uh, heated seats, it is a common thing for them not to be working, especially the bum warmers. The backrests, I've never really heard of them failing. Um, unfortunately, my seat was the that example that passenger seat the backrest had also failed and um, there was no heat from that either now it's an important thing to note with the heated seats if the bum warmer does not work the backrest won't work because it works in a series okay it's a continual series it needs to be a complete circuit so it goes through there then it goes through there then it goes back to the block via the earth there's two wires for it you've got the earth and then you've got the actual wire that basically puts the power through and that's how the series circuit works so if this isn't working it may be because this isn't working if this works and this doesn't then that's dud that's a complete dud now i hope i hope i haven't lost you so far because this is really complicated and i'm trying to show you exactly what i know what i don't know there could be a few things that i may have missed but most likely this is the sort of wiring that you're going to have in your car. So there's another example I can give you in terms of the wiring dilemma you may have. If you have a facelifted CLLX with cloth seats from the factory, or ZTEC actually, with cloth seats from the factory, you will not have the wiring loom for this airbag. So if you bought a set of these with... An airbag okay you will have obviously the functionality for that you may have the functionality for the heated seats you probably will have the wiring for the heated seats but you won't have the wiring for that okay so basically that's doing nothing obviously it doesn't really matter it's just in the event of an accident that's going to go off that's going to go off but obviously nothing will happen here because these are not connected because there's no loom for it so we wouldn't worry about fitting these type of leather seats into a lower spec car but you will not have airbag functionality but you may have functionality for the heated seats right, let's just take a trip under here right now you see where the wiring loom comes through now i have had to make some adjustments to my wiring loom now you see this block connector if i just show you it comes in two bits so this back half is the seat section this front bit is what attaches to this wiring loom so the wiring loom that goes through here it goes in this way now this bolt is what you have to take out to separate the two halves and then they come apart i'd recommend disconnecting the battery because Obviously, you don't want any uh, airbags going off while you're doing that. But if you've noticed, I've got two wires here, and they are bullet connected. Now, the reason for that is this red wire, no, coming out the loom. Let me just get the camera on this. You've got this green and white wire. That is the heating element wire, and this black wire is the earth for the heated seats. Now, there's a reason why I've had to connect this up this way. Basically, ages ago, I stopped getting 
any power going to the driver's heated seat elements and the back heater. There was just absolutely nothing on pressing the switch. So I took the seat slab off and I looked at whether I was actually getting continuity to the actual elements. I checked the elements and they were showing full continuity. So I knew both the backrest and the bum warmer were working perfectly fine. But the issue was it wasn't delivering any power whatsoever or very little of it. So I basically put my multimeter on one side of the block connector on the wiring loom side and put the other side to the actual um, the seat block connector side. I was getting continuity, but I did some extra measurements. I was getting 12 volts through to the bum warmer, which is the first part of the circuit because it goes through the bum warmer and then it goes through to the back heater and then through the ground back to the car again to complete the circuit. I measured 10, uh, sorry, 12 volts at that wire. Then on the other side, I measured 10 volts, 10. That's why the element wasn't working. It was showing continuity because there was power, but this is where continuity tests are rubbish when it comes to cars. There was 12 volts going through that block connector and on the other side of that wire, 10 volts. There was a connection issue in the block for whatever meant there was a voltage drop of two volts and that was enough for the heating elements not to work at all. So it just goes to show that even though you have continuity, it just shows that things may not work properly. 10 volts is not enough for a lot of things to work in a car. So basically I've now bridged the connection. I bridged the connection afterwards with bullet connectors. It worked perfectly fine and I've kept it that way ever since. I've just done it as neatly as possible and I've been absolutely fine four years later. Now, obviously, if you're looking at originality, if you have a ZTEC with cloth seats and you want originality, but you want to upgrade in a nice way to these leather seats, these are the ones you go for, okay? So you'll go for the manual adjustment. You must make sure it is manually adjusted, okay? You can't get electrically adjusted ZTEC seats, by the way. You can only get the gear seats with flatter bolsters, electrical adjustment, and no manual adjustment, okay? So there is a big difference. These are the ones you go for if you have a ZTEC. If you have a CL or LX, you can go for gear seats because, as I say, they'll look more in keeping with the actual fact that on a CL and LX, you won't have um, big bolsters exactly like on the gear. But obviously, you're not going to have potentially you're not going to have the wiring for the electric adjustment so you've got to be considerate of that and i believe the mot tester might fail you for the fact that it doesn't operate and change the height of the seat now it's just possible that i may have got a few things wrong in this video but only minor things very minor but pretty much that's how the electrical systems are with the seats you if you are thinking of converting from cloth seats to leather seats, I would recommend getting the driver's seat up. So just take the Torx bolts out, all four of them, lift the seat back, take that little bolt out of that block, separate the block so you can see what wiring you've got in the loom. Doesn't matter what's in the seat, look at what wires you've got in the loom, count the wires, have a look at the colors and study the wiring diagram because you'll, just, you'll, you'll be able to see the colors and you'll be able to note which one is for the seatbelt pretensioner. If you've, you've, you'll have that one as standard. That is the one wire you will have no matter what focus model, the seatbelt pretensioner wire. You may have one for a side, air, impact air, a side airbag, but you probably won't. And you certainly won't. Uh, if, you, if you haven't got a Gear ST170, you will not have the wiring for the electric adjustment. It's as simple as that. So I hope that covers that. There aren't really many problems with these seats. A warm driver's bolster, easy. Just switch the slab for another one. If you have leather, if you have leather seats and you're struggling to get just a seat slab for a new seat slab for the driver's seat, go on eBay, look at just buying a, a seat slab or go to a scrapyard, get a seat slab off there and just swap the phone. If you, if you go to a scrapyard, just make sure 
that you kn you know what model of car you've got. So if you've got a ZTEC with the bigger bolsters, you can't get foam off a gear LX or CL. You need one off a ZTEC because they've got the bigger bolsters. And equally, if you have a CL, LX or gear, you can't get ZTEC bolsters of ZTEC foam slabs because they've got the bigger bolsters in. And obviously the seat cover that you've taken off your old seat won't fit the one you've just bought. So I would recommend going to a scrapyard and just whack, getting a seat slab, preferably get a passenger seat slab because that won't have as much wear as a driver's seat slab second hand. So do that, switch it over, and then you'll have basically a really nice driver's seat. And that really is all you need to know about the seats. Just, if you've got a three door, lubricate these. If these this needs stitching, honestly, get your mum to sort it out. Just take the seat covers off and get your mum to sort it out if you're no good at stitching. I had a go and I did a really good job. I had to do some stitching down there as well. But honestly, the seat covers are not that bad. The seat slabs are very easy to dissect. And if you're replacing the heating elements, you can get universal ones. Wire the, route the wires through neatly under the seat cut the universal plugs off, solder it to the old plugs, bung it in the block and you should be good. If you're having issues with any of these things not working, check the block because that can also be a problem. So I hope that this has been a good video. Please put anything in the comments where you think I might have been wrong because this is a complicated subject. The wiring looms are very different from one spec to the other, pre-facelift and facelift but hopefully I've been as clear as I possibly can with this scenario. I mean, as an example, I do not have the wiring for electric mirrors, electrically adjusted mirrors. On the ZTEX, you get the manual mirrors. Some cars have the wiring loom in the door to convert them to electric. I did look at this ages ago, but I do not have wiring on my particular car. It's just the way things are. And it is pretty much like that for a lot of Mark 1s. There is just no logic at the way they threw the looms at these cars. Anyway, you take care, guys. See you very soon.